Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's Clarity Soft webinar. Today is Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. I'm Susan Arnold, Implementation Specialist here at Clarity Soft. And our topic today is a guide for system administrators. This particular one is one for those of you who have been given the task of setting up your database and configuring it for all of your other users. And what we're going to do is concentrate on just the settings menu in Clarity Soft and going through the different things that are there. There are some new things. So some of you that have been system administrators for a while will hopefully learn some new um, things that we've added recently. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing we'll talk about is just doing a quick overview of the settings menu. Um, for those of you that are already using Clarity Soft and have been using it, you know that a settings menu is where you go to make all the changes um, to set up the structure of your database for all of your other users. And um, some people have the rights to it and some people don't. So it's possible you may not be an admin user in Clarity Soft, but there's no reason not to stay in the webinar today because you might learn some things that you can take back to your admin user and say, hey, you know, I learned some stuff. Could we implement this in our database? Um, so then a general setup process to follow the, you know, the steps when you're first starting up with Clarity Soft. Usually your implementation person helps you with that, but I'll review those and go over them. Then in the settings, you also add your users for your database, and each user in the database can have what we call an access profile. Um, and the access profile controls what that user can see and do in the database. And you have pretty complete control all the way down to the field level um, for each user. So technically, if you had five users, you could create five custom profiles and each one could have different rights, different screen layouts as far as the fields that they see. So everything could be completely different and all the users would be completely unaware <laughs> that everyone has something different. Um, and then custom fields, the main thing that you're going to do in the settings is adding custom fields to your database to make it fit your particular business or organization. And that's where you learn how to create the custom fields, set up what we call the user interface templates, um, and then those, can, those are based upon the access profiles that you have. Um, and then after you do your custom fields and you're setting up the profiles, how do you go about testing what you've set up for different users? One of the nice things with Clarity Soft Live is you can log out and then log in as a different user using their login name, password that you've given them and see what that person's going to see to make sure, yes, I did set that up correctly. That person is going to see what I want that person to see. Um, and then modifying, this is another um, benefit of Clarity Soft. Even though you've already set up your database, perhaps you've already started using it with your team, you want to modify, you want to change the name of a field, you want to add another option to a drop down list, you want to um, add a new custom field. All of those things can be done and you just basically go back into your settings, do what you need to do, once all the users log out and log back in, they're good to go. So we'll, kind of, we'll cover all of those. Um, if you do have some questions while you're working, there is a Q&A panel in the Zoom meeting. Type them in there. I hopefully will glance over at my other monitor <laughs> and see the questions. You might have to quote yell, um, hey, I'm over here. But we'll, I'll do my best to, to answer them before the end of the session today. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm bringing up my Clarity Soft, and if you are, let's see, most of the people that are here um, look like they're pretty, you know, some of you are experienced with Clarity Soft, some of you might be relatively new, so we have a mixed crowd today, so that's good. Um, but anyway, when you come into Clarity Soft out of the box, 
it is pretty plain vanilla. And when you open a record, you see basic information in the account record and all the records are pretty much the same where you're just gonna have the basic information, name of the account, phone, address, that's it. So what you then need to do is to decide, well, how can I customize this to make it fit my business? What do I need to track at the account level with the companies that we work with? Do I need to know, um, are they a prospect or a customer or client, whatever terminology you use, are they a vendor or a supplier? So you might create a, an account type field or a status field. What market are they in? Do I need to know that so that I can select from a drop down list and say they're in transportation, they're in healthcare, they're in manufacturing? With the goal of that being that I, be, I would be able to filter on that and pull up all my manufacturing companies or pull up all my transportation companies so I can see them. So a lot of it is deciding how do I need to categorize my list so that I can pull up certain groups of accounts either in the list view in the database or perhaps in reports. I want to categorize them in reports. So it's just sitting down either yourself or with your team and kind of walking through and saying, what do we need? You know, how do we need to categorize? And then deciding upon those custom fields. And that might take a meeting or two. Um, also, if you're working with a, your implementation person, that person, Linda or myself, will help you walk through this process because that's what the whole quick start process is about. Um, and each module, you also will decide, well, what modules do we need to use? You will use accounts plus contacts because they go together, but then after that, what do you want to use? Do you need quotations? Some people do, some people don't. Do you need to track sales or does it go over to your, you know, your accounting system at that point? So you, you, you look at these and say, well, what do we need? And then in the settings, we can turn these off so that your people don't see them. If you're never ever going to use quotes or sales, why have them here when we can turn them off? So those are the kinds of things you want to talk about, figure out, brainstorm about before you, you know, before you dive in. Um, and we can see here we don't have any custom fields really here. So the next thing then is to go into settings and your settings button is up here it's this gear shape button you click on it and then you will see your settings menu on the left side of the screen the way all of this works is the menu runs down the left side you click on an option and then it'll expand to show you additional options you'll click on one of those once you select something, then on the right side of the screen will be the changes that you can make. So it follows a pattern, menu on the left, changes to be made on the right. And once you get used to that, it's, you know, it's very easy to follow. So when you come into settings, the first place it's going to land is in this top section called My Settings. And the My Settings area down to Audit Log, if you see the Audit Log, will be visible to all your users. These are settings that the user can change, okay? And they will only apply to the specific user that is logged in. Um, anything below that, System Settings on down, these are things that only the admin user can see and work with, okay? And when you create a user in the system, there is a checkbox in the user record to say this person is an admin user or not. Now you may have more than one admin user so that if you're gone for a week or something on vacation and something comes up that needs to be changed, then you have a backup person who can go in and make a change or do something. Um, I don't recommend having 
you know, four or five admin users, because then all of you can start stepping on each other's toes if you're all going in and making changes to the structure of the database. So one or two, that's fine. Getting beyond that, probably you want to be careful, okay? Um, so anyway, so the any user will see the My Settings section, and you can see it lands on Preferences here which is asking, what is your time zone? What date format do you prefer? Each user can prefer a different date format, okay? Um, so it's just the way the database will display the date to them. So if you have someone, you know, the states were pretty much, this is our common way to see it, but then when you get into Canada, they're kind of half this and half that. Um, Europe is more this, so depending on where your people might be, they can set the date format to view the way they would like to see it. Um, then you can also set what calendar um, format do you want to see or view. Do you want a full work week, just a work, uh, a week, which would be a seven-day week, month, etc. So each user is able to set this, um, and it won't affect any other user. When you log in, where do you want to land? Do you want to land in accounts? Do you work mostly in opportunities and you prefer to go straight to opportunities? So each user, again, can choose which module ClaritySoft should go to um, by default when they log in. For example, for me, I work in projects almost all day long when I'm in, in there. So I have mine set to go into projects. Um, so it's easy. I don't have to click to go anywhere else. I just land in projects. Um, this Outlook Contact Sync, don't worry about it. That's a coming thing. Um, this is new, record conversion. When you convert a record, you can convert a lead to an account and contact. You can convert a, an opportunity to a quote, a, an opportunity to a sale or a, a quote to a sale. And we just recently added this, that if you change this to open, when you do the conversion, ClaritySoft will automatically go and open the new record it's creating. So for example, you convert an opportunity to a quote record because you wanna go create a quote. Well, previously it would say, yep, I'm converting this and you click OK and then you click OK again for something else and then it would leave you sitting in opportunities. So you then had to go to quotations and then find the quote and open it. Well, now we've shortened that whole thing down that if you turn this on to open, when you convert that opportunity to a quote, it automatically opens the quote and you're right there in the quote record. So that's something you'll probably want to check out and maybe let your people know. Um, and this would happen on any record conversion in the database. So you can choose to not open it or to open it. Um, I recently changed this and I very much like it. So once you set your settings or the user sets the settings, you click apply to save them. Okay, um, then the other important one under here for each individual user will be to have each user create their and save their own email signature in here. Now, I'm not going to go into how to do that today, but you want them to create an email signature, save it, and then they can put it as their default so that when they open an email in ClaritySoft, by default, it will pull in that signature, okay? So that's, um, we have videos on how to create signatures, so that would be something you want everyone to do. Notice I have multiple signatures here, and so you can have different signatures if necessary that are saved in ClaritySoft. So that is something they wanna do. Um, my information is another important one for each user to fill in. Basically their name, email, address, all that information, fill it in, save it, then that feeds automatically into quote templates um, and things like that. They don't have to fill it in ever again in the database. So if they fill that in, good to go. All right. Um, then, 
export options I'm going to skip over right now. This is setting up fields, standard fields, like if you were going to export accounts, um, you can have a standard list of fields that are all set up. You can customize it, save it, and then you have when you do an export to Excel from the accounts module, it'll pull up your list that you've created. So not overly important to do perhaps in the future themes some people care about this change your color scheme okay changing your password um, if a person wants to change their password they can log in with their current password type it here type a new password confirm it okay right now my rules on the password are a minimum of five characters in a second i'm going to show you how you can make that more complex okay then they can change it. So a user can change it if they want um, in here. Audit log, this is, um, some of you will see this, some may not. Um, this allows you to track what yourself, you yourself are doing or any other user in the system. And you can say, well, what's so-and-so done for the last two days in the database? And you can see all of the activity that a particular user has done. So, you know, I have myself selected here, but I have all users that I can see. Um, this can be helpful if somebody does something they shouldn't do. <laughs> Maybe they have delete rights, you haven't turned them off and they've accidentally deleted something. You can come in here and find it and usually undo the action, okay? If you're not able to undo it, then call our tech support team and they'll help you. But that's the purpose of the audit log is just to see, well, what are people doing in here? You know, are they logging in? Are they doing any work? What work are they doing? Okay, so that's, that's there for you or anyone to go in and see. So these are your, um, my settings for each individual user. Now, the email settings, I'm gonna, because you're the admin people, I'm gonna jump down a little bit here to, um, I'm gonna hit system settings next. So system settings are things you as an admin user will set. Um, general settings are to enter your company name, set the time zone. Oh, and I wanna mention something with the time zone. What you need to do, if the time zone is incorrect, we don't have a drop down list here because what we've done is we've actually entered every single time zone in the world that you can access. So what you do is you select the current time zone and then you simply start typing until you get the one you want and you choose it. Okay, and that's a little confusing. So you just select the one until you get it. And then you'll, like I said, every time zone in the world is there. So that makes it nice to be able to set because I know some people do have people all over the place. Again, the date format. Now you're setting this as a system setting. The individual setting, if the user doesn't want this setting for the date, then the user can change it under my settings, but this is your global setting for the whole database, okay? Then you wanna set what month your fiscal year starts so that the database for filtering and reporting will pull up proper first quarter, second quarter, year to date um, in, the, in the reports and the filters. Your currency symbol, allow global search is either no or yes, this defaults to no when you first come in. If you're going to use the leads module, then turn it on because this will allow you to search for a contact or a company name in leads, accounts, and contacts all at the same time. So this can be useful to your people. It's also extremely useful to those users you might set as individual users where when they log in, they can only see their own records and they can't see anyone else's. So they might get a new lead or company 
and they don't know if that company already exists in the database because it can't see it. It belongs to someone else. So they can use the global search to type in that company name and find it and see, oh yes, this belongs to so-and-so. Okay, then I don't want to put it in here because someone else already has it. So that's very helpful if you've restricted um, the view for your users. And then dashboard performances, these are the charts. Real time means that as you're entering data in the database, it will automatically update them real time. If your database seems to slow down on this, then you can change it to cached performance. And then it will um, maybe, it depends on how much data you have and how many dashboards you've got going in there trying to update themselves. And then here's the password rules. We added this, so I don't know, maybe a year or so ago. You can change the length. So if you want to have a longer password, you choose the length that you want. Then you can choose, yes, I want you to put symbols in. Yes, I want you to include lowercase characters. And then once you apply this and people log out and log back in, when they change their password, an existing password will be fine. But when someone changes their password, they will have to follow the new rules that you have set up for them, okay? And this was a request by certain companies want to have, you know, stronger passwords than just any five characters. So that's why we set that up. This here has to do with Gmail setup, um, which if you're not using, you don't need to worry about. So the new part is the, um, let's see global search, not new, um, and then this password rules, okay? All right, I'm just gonna gloss over system notifications. These are notifications that ClaritySoft sends out to your users when you do certain things. Um, support tickets get sent out, reminders for activities, um, reports that are scheduled. Do not touch these. You don't need to touch these unless for some reason they don't seem to be working. Then you call tech support and they'll give you help. Um, so these are there. You don't really need to do anything with them. Um, module names. You can change the module names, but they only change in the navigation panel and at the top of the screen. Other places in the module they will not change. I usually say forget it because it's too confusing to your people, okay? <laughs> logo, you can enter your logo in here. Again, you just choose a file and it'll bring up a grid and then you have to cram the logo into a very tiny uh, rectangle box, which everybody seems to do. So you pick the smallest size logo that you have and then you put it in and then that logo appears at the top of your navigation panel. So it looks really nice. Um, one of the things we do recommend, if you, if you have your logo saved in a vector type file, then no matter how big or small it gets, it doesn't get blurry and then it will look clearer. So if you have a graphics or marketing person, um, get them to save it in a vector type of file, and then you should have a really nice looking logo in your database. All right, other global things here, name prefix. If you need prefixes like Mr., Ms., Mrs., Dr., Professor, whatever, you can come here, add a list in here, and then that becomes a drop down list in the contact record. Um, some people need these, some people don't. You just come, you click add, you add, whatever you want and save it and it becomes part of the drop down list okay same thing with suffixes you can add different suffixes in here they can be junior senior the second the third they can be professional suffixes one warning on this one is the drop down list is a single select so if someone is more than one professional type of suffix, you'll have to create that combination as a drop down choice because you can't go down and say they're this and this and this. That's the one caution on the suffixes. All right. So as an admin user, you need to know that. Um, then lead sources. 
this is a global field and then we put it under system settings and a lot of people can't find it so um, it's here and this is where you can add as many lead sources how do your leads customers come to you again this can be as many as you want to add you simply click the add button type a new lead source and it's added to the list you if you want to change the order click on one to select it and move it up or down whatever you want to do you also can click here to move up or down as well okay um, so now i'm going to mention disable here versus delete disable means that the option stays in the list and in the database but it won't show up in the lead drop down list anymore if you decide there's a lead source that you no longer want to use don't delete it because if you've got a bunch of records with that set as the lead source you can cause problems so you want to disable it that means that those records that are set with that particular lead source will remain intact but you won't be able to pick it anymore because it won't be in the drop down list and then maybe at some future point you can group edit the other ones and change them to a new lead source now you can change the spelling of something okay so um i don't know let's see here i've just if i wanted to do this let's say i wanted to call this a personal referral versus a professional referral so you could do i could come in here and change this i'm changing the spelling i'm not deleting i'm not doing anything and then i could just change the spelling what will happen is all of the records that have referral as the lead source will now say personal referral so okay so deleting is dangerous disabling is fine changing the spelling or the wording is also fine okay um, all right users and access so one of the first things you're going to do is get your users into clarity soft so you may only have two or three you may have 20 or more um, and you create a user record for each user if you have just a few you probably can manually add them and type them in if you have more then what we usually recommend to do is import the list and for each individual user i'm going to open a record here so where's mine um, you have different pieces of information you have the first name and last name the person's title, phone number, email address, you definitely want to put in because this is what the system uses for those system notifications. You can skip title and phone number. They're just there for information purposes, but the email is there and is used. They need a user login name, which you can decide. A lot of times I usually tell people just do what is the first part of your email, you know, if it's your first initial last name or your first name last initial or just whatever it is in your email just use that because then that's usually consistent for everybody um, password you can enter a password for your users as a generic password and then they can go to my settings and um, um, the you know go to the my settings and change their password once they log in okay um okay kelly you're asking me i see we have admin as a user that's your original admin login that you got from you know when you first set up your database which was what several years ago um so that would you know that user is set as an admin user down here but if you have your own login, which I'm sure you do, that one also has you as an admin user. So you just use your login to go in, okay? Um, so you should, you know, you don't have to go to the admin login, all right? 
Okay, so then profile is, this is that access profile that I was talking about earlier, where this determines what records the user can see in the database. So all means they can see all records, no matter who the owner of the record is. Individual means when the person logs in, that person sees only their own records and no one else's. Manager is one that you set someone as a manager and then you have people report to the manager. Okay, that's what that reports to is. What that means is the manager can see his or her records plus those of the people underneath or report to him or her. Then the people underneath would only be able to see um, their own records and not see upward to the manager. Okay. Um, and then team don't use, that's for offline, so that's, that's, don't even worry about it. Terminated you would use if someone leaves and you want to cut off access to the database for them, but you aren't going to delete them as, you know, f as a user. You don't want to do that. Again, that causes problems. If they own, you know, a thousand records in the database, then all of a sudden you're trying to delete them. What happens to those records? So you mark them as terminated and further down you, you click on deactivate. That means they can no longer log into the database. And then you can take the time to reassign their accounts to the new person that comes on board. It also frees up your license when you do the termination and the deactivation. So, you know, if you have 10 licenses and one person leaves, that backs you down to nine. So when a new person comes on, you can add that new person as your 10th license, okay? And then time zone, when you enter time zone here, it actually will auto fill in that preferences time zone for the user. Um, user types, these you can see over here. You can define a user type. This could possibly be a region. Um, if you have um, sales territories or regions, you can assign, um, you can create those regions, north, south, east, west, assign a person to the north, northern region, and then that can be used in filters and in reporting, okay? Um, a lot of people don't use these unless they have a larger team. Um, and then the other one is groups. You can create groups over here. And what you would do if you're going to use groups, you would first of all set the person to be an individual user. Then you could say, well, this person is a member of the Northeast region group. And so then anybody that you assign to the Northeast region, region group, those people can see each other's records, but they can't see outside of that. So you can assign them by creating a group, or you can assign them to, you can just say, well, this person's an individual, but he or she can see this person and this person. So you can do it individually, okay? So there's a lot of control here. If you start with individual as your access profile, then you can say, okay, they can see themselves, but they also can see Jim Smith, or they can see Susan Morris. So you have a lot of control here. Um, on what you do um, with those different profiles, all right? And then if you want the person to be an admin user, you check that checkbox, okay? And if they need to be deactivated, you click here. And then that will cut them off from being able to log into ClaritySoft. So once you've got that filled in for a person, you would save it. Now, if you have 30 people, you can go here to import. Then you can click here to download a template in Excel that lets you fill in all the information that you want to fill in. And then you come back to here and you import that template. And that will allow you to upload all of your users at one time. So probably, you know, if you've got quite a few people, you probably have a spreadsheet somewhere with everybody's name. And so you can, you need to split their first name and last name, and then just fill this in, in the template, and then you can import it.
okay? So that makes it easier than entering them all. If you have four or five users, it's probably just as easy to um, type them in as it is to create the spreadsheet and import it. It's probably about the same, okay? Um, and then here you can see the login name that you've given each person. You can see if they report to anybody. And then you can see what profile you've assigned to them and if they're an admin user. This little green circle here means the person is logged in. So you can see I have a very lazy team. I'm the only person logged into the database right now. All right, so that's there. All right, now user email settings. I skipped the email settings at the top to come down here. As the admin user, you are able to come here and from a drop down list, you can pick each user and fill in the email settings. Now, what are these email settings? These are your outgoing, either Outlook or Gmail or whatever email system you use, they are the settings for the outgoing email, okay? <laughs> so we use Outlook, Office 365, and basically once you get yours to work, then you can set up all the middle section here for all your users. And the only thing they would have to do is come in and add their email password, click apply to save it, and then click the save and test button to make sure it connects successfully. So this sometimes this takes a little while to figure out. Um, and you might need some help from tech support or from an IT person to get this to work. But you fill it in, you click apply to save it and then you click the save and test button and it'll either say you failed or you successfully connected, okay? Um, if it takes a long time to come up with that message, you usually have failed. If it's pretty fast, <laughs> you've made the connection. But you need to pick, like for here, um, if you're on Gmail, then you would choose Gmail and then it will throw some standard settings in and you may have to change those. So just kind of go down through. This would be um, in your Gmail, you can look at your outgoing email settings on your smartphone. You can look at your settings in there or you can corner your IT person and grab help there. But you wanna set that up for each individual user um, so that all the information is filled in. And then like I said, you would apply it to save it and then they would, come in and type in their own email password, but they'll do it up at the top in the My Settings section. Because when they log in, they're only gonna see their own email settings. They won't see, be able to see anybody else's. But you as the admin can set it up down here, which makes it a lot easier for you, okay? So that's an important one. Access profiles. This is where, like I said before, you can control what the person can see and do in the database. So you can see here, the standard ones are the all, the individual, manager, team, and terminated. These two I added as custom ones because I wanted them to be different. So if I click on an access profile to open it, These are the settings that you have. So first of all, is the person with this profile a salesperson in the database? Yes or no? So you might have um, like an admin assistant using ClaritySoft, but that person is not a salesperson. So you could create a custom access profile to say, okay, well, they're all dash, you know, administrator or executive assistant not a salesperson, okay? Lead manager means that the person can go into the leads module and change the ownership of the lead records to a different salesperson. So a person who's a sales manager, when new leads come in, may be the, one, the person who's able to go in and do that, but the actual sales team people cannot. 
So these are things to think about. And each time you want to make something different, then you're going to want to create a new access profile and customize it. Then down here, we have all the modules. All the modules are visible. I, with an all profile, can create a new record in any of the modules. I can edit my own. I can delete them. I can edit a shared record, meaning one that belongs to someone else. And I can delete a record that belongs to someone else. Well, maybe you don't want that. Okay, now I'm going to go into another one in a minute and show you the difference. Feature access, what can they do? They can do mass email. Okay, they can export to Excel, they can merge accounts and contacts, they can import data. A lot of times you don't want your team to import data because they can be, you know, they could possibly put in a very messy list. So you want to control some of these things that they can and can't do in the database. Um, report permissions, this is in the reports module. What can they do? They can view all the reports create new ones, edit ones, and delete ones. Maybe you don't want all those rights. Maybe you're going to create all the reports and they can view them. They cannot create, edit, or delete an existing report. Um, and then sales stage access. This, um, you can have different sales stages seen by different um, profiles. Um, like an inside team versus an outside team in opportunities, you can create all the stages and then you can say, well, for this profile, they can see these stages, but not these two. Okay. I don't know a whole lot of people that use this, but it's there. All right. So that this one is basically complete. This, you know, anybody with an all profile here can see everything. So if I go back here, and let's look at the marketing team. So on the marketing team profile, turned off salesperson. I've let them be the lead manager so they could reassign leads. They are not seeing quotations and sales, okay? They are not seeing all of these modules. They can create new records, edit the records, but no deletion allowed. Okay, so you can see now I have control or I've created control over this for that person. And then the feature access, okay, the marketing person, first of all, needs to, if you have the marketing module, just be able to access it um, and needs to be able to do a mass email, probably needs to export to Excel, maybe import lists. Okay, so you can see the things that are here that the marketing person can do, and you choose what you want. Same thing here, turned off some reports because they don't need them, but can create, edit, and delete any reports. So you can see that I've got a different profile. And if you wanna create a new profile, all you have to do is click the Add button, and then I usually suggest preface it with what access does the, is the person going to have, all or individual. And then do all dash, whatever you're going to call it, or individual dash, whatever you're going to call it. And then you come down and start choosing. Now, where you have to be careful, if this one is going to be individual dash something, Right here, you need to make sure you change the data access to individual. That's a little bit hidden in there and you tend to miss it. But then you go down and you click to make your selections and then save it, okay? You can create as many access profiles as you like. Just be aware that for every access profile that you create, you then are having to set up your user interface template. So it all kind of chains together. All right. But that's access profiles. Think about that. You know, you may have some people that you want to adjust access profiles for. All right. Now let's get down to um, 
customization. Ooh, I got 15 minutes. I got to talk fast here, groups. <laughs> um, so customization is being able to add custom fields. So this is the crux of your database. If you've talked about all the custom fields that you want, then you're going to come here to customization and you have each module has the ability to add custom fields. And you just basically work your way down through each of the modules, add your custom fields, okay? Now, design tips. In ClaritySoft, if you are using the leads module, then you can create custom fields in here. And if you create the same custom field in accounts, contacts, opportunities, quotes, or sales, or all of them, when you convert that lead and then you create the next new record, the data is going to flow across. So for example, I have a custom field here called product interest, and it has a particular drop-down list, okay? Oh, I want to create the same field in accounts. So what I usually recommend you do, you create your fields you want in the leads module, or you can create them in accounts first and go back to the leads module. It doesn't matter where. Um, and so I want to get this into accounts. So if I have a drop down list, and maybe you might have a fairly lengthy one, you can open the record here for the field, copy the list, then I can go to accounts, add, and I want to make sure that the field name is spelled the same way. The data type needs to be the same. It was a drop down multi select. And then I can click in here and paste my list. So, again, if you have a pretty long list, you don't want to retype it. Create it once copy the list, and then go anywhere else you want to put that same field. So for example, if I wanted to come back over here and go to contacts, and I don't know that I have that in here. Mm -mm. If I wanted it per contact, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I don't have to, but if I do put it in here, so if I put it here, Again, drop down, multi-select, paste, save. All right. And then I could do the same thing. While I have that list copied, I can go to opportunities. I may already have it in here. No, nope, Yeah, there it's already there. But I could do the same thing. So I could literally copy it throughout the whole database. All right. Now. You can come in here, you can add all your custom fields. If you're working in accounts and you're adding your different custom fields, you can sit here, add them all. You have all the different field types in our knowledge base. There's a good description of all the different types of fields. Um, I am going to mention a couple of new ones um, that we've added. In the last, oh, I don't know, four or five months, I have no idea how many months have gone by. <laughs> but for some of you that maybe have been using the database for a while, um, some that are relatively new, lookup type field. This one, when you create a lookup type field, it lets you connect it to accounts, contacts, or users. So if you attach it to what some people might use this one for, let me see if I've already got it in here. Um, sometimes they need to have a parent company associated with another company. Did I take it out? Yeah, just make, I just want to make sure, okay. Um, and so what they want, Is a parent organization, parent company, you know, umbrella company, whatever. They want to be able to look up the name of the account rather than type it. 
makes it easier for your users. So I can make it a lookup type field. Oops. That's what I thought. I already had it in there. Okay. I just can't read. <laughs> um, and the same thing, there's a multi-value lookup. Here it is. So it's already there. Um, a multi-value lookup, which lets, works the same way, but lets you look up more than one, make more than one connection. Okay. Um, and I'll show you how this works in a minute. And then there's a new one. called a relationship type field. Now we've had relationships under the relationships tab for a long time, but it's never been searchable. You can relate accounts to accounts and contacts to accounts and contacts to contacts and opportunities. So you can do a lot of relating um, in the database, but then you can't really search it. Now with the relationship type field, you create a lookup of an account and give it a field name. And then you can say, well, I want to connect it to any other type of record. Where people use this one, um, they might have people that sit on boards of directors. So they want to relate a person to the company where they're a board member for. So you create so what you could do here is you could say in the account record, the field is called board member. In the contact record, it's called board member four. Okay. Um, and then you get two fields created at the same time. So it's, it's pretty cool to use and I think it's um, really useful because you can relate more than one person as a board member to that company. Um, and then that one person could be related to multiple companies as a board member for. And when you go to the contact record, you'll see a list of all the companies that they're a board member for. And when you go to the company, um, you'll see a list of all the board members associated with it, and it creates the two records at the same time. So just explore our new um, fields. So the relationships type, the um, lookup types, those are there. Um, and uh, depending on the level of Clarity Soft you have, you may or may not see them. So you might have to talk to your account rep. So to add a new field, you go to custom fields, you click add, you name the field, you create it um, and save it. Now, once you're done with that, the next big step you have to make or remember to make is add those fields to the user interface template. And then this is where those access profiles come back into being, okay? I don't. Because when you come here, it's telling you to pick, well, what access profile do you want to work with or design for? Doesn't matter. I, you can pick the base template that's kind of a master template, but if you're using the all one, just go directly to the all one. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set up your layout. So for example, I have account type. I can move these anywhere I want them to go. You just drag. And if you've done, you know, some of you have done this. So like here's board member. That's a relationship field that's there. Let me see what else do I have. Here's another one, I think. Um, I'm going to pull this over, then industry type, and you can put these anywhere you want. If you put them down on this secondary tab, um, then it'll create another tab inside the record that you can have, so you can kind of group your fields. Um, and I know Maria's out there, she's got like a zillion tabs. <laughs> Um, that she's put all this on. Here's my parent company. That's where I wanted to go. So that's my lookup. And that's probably good enough. So I can do this, lay this out the way I want, and then I can save it. Now, the next cool thing that I can do 
if I have a whole bunch of access profiles, I don't have to go to each one. See, there's a drop down list of them all here. I don't have to go to each one. I can just say copy to. And then I choose where do I want to copy this. So I just go down and pick, you know, all the ones that I want to copy to. Save it and it's now done. Now, if on one of the other profiles there is a field that you don't want, then go there and drag it off and save it. But it at least allows you to copy the main setting to um, all the other profiles you've created. Now, here's another new thing, okay? I should have little drum rolls for all these new things. This column customization. One of the questions we get a lot when we're first working with people is in the list view, you can set your columns with the column settings. And people will always ask, can I do this for everybody? And the question, the answer has always been no, <laughs> until now. So now you have the column customization. I can come in here and say, well, I want them to see this. I don't want them to see that. I want them to see the city. I want them to see, again, you decide what you want your people to see in the columns as the base. Okay, now they can go in and still change it. That is if you don't lock it. So you set this up for what you want them to see when they first log into ClaritySoft. And then you come over here and you say, well, how many, you know, how do you want to sort how many results per page as the default? And then you say, apply columns to users. That then will apply those settings to all users. So this is something we just added like in the last, I don't know, three weeks. So most of you probably don't know that yet. Um, and then if you want to lock it so they can't change it, you can turn this on and then they cannot change it. Um, they won't see column settings, at least in the accounts module, okay? But if you leave it turned off as far as locked, then they still can go and, you know, they can update and change their columns. Um, but the default will be this, okay? So that is new. Um, and then you just save it. And then the other one I want to look at because there's another new functionality that goes with this. I have um in contacts and the other modules you have the column customization so you have this you know you do your same thing here uh here's board member four um Okay, and here's product interest. I, I created that. So you set it up, save it. Okay. You can copy it to your other ones, just same thing. You'd copy the layout to wherever else you want it to go. Okay, just like I just did. Um, and then now you have column customization, just like we just did at the account level. So I can pull over, you know, again, whatever I want people to see. I'm not going to waste a whole lot of time on it. Um, and then apply. All right. I forgot to change that to 100. But the other thing you now have are sub-tab columns. So will you know, when you open an account record in ClaritySoft, and then you click on the contacts tab and you have a set of columns under the tab that is now able to be changed. So for example, if for some reason, so this is the sub tab. So right now I'm seeing the contact title. This all should look familiar, but maybe I want to know, well, what communications list is this person on? Or, you know, again, whatever custom fields you want, what industry type are they involved in? Okay, 
So I can set up the subtabs and again apply them to all my users. So if I save this and then I log out and back in, There are the columns that I set, okay? And no matter which user I log in as, it's gonna have those same columns set up. And then if I open, if I go here and I click on the contacts tab, there are the sub tabs. So you see, I added communications and industry type. This is to me really great because again, people have asked this forever in a day and now you can do it. And also notice that the user still can come right here to this little settings button and there they can add any additional field for that person right there, okay? So this is really great because now when they're looking up an account and they're looking at contacts, they can see the pertinent information that they want to see right there in the list. And that really, to me, really makes it really useful. And the fact that you as the admin user can set it up as a standard to start with now makes it really great too. So you can set up not only these main list view columns, but also these subtab columns. And you have subtabs for all the different um, modules here, okay? Um, so there's that. Um, let me see. So I think we covered <laughs> just about everything. The only thing I wanted to do was log out. So we were talking about testing. If I set up different um, settings for each of my users, like I created a different access profile, the beauty of this is that I can log in as a, one of the other users and then I can see what my settings are. So for this person, he was set as an individual and I had turned off quotations and sales. So quotations and sales does not show up over here. And he is seeing only his own accounts of which he has 34, okay? And I changed the color. You know, he can come in and change the color. But that's how you can test it. So if you're not real sure what you're doing um, and whether it's going to work, set it up, log out, log back in as that person, and then you will see the results of your login, okay? Um, so that's, that's there. Um, and then I'll just very quickly, because I know people have to go. Um, here's that board member. All right, here's the lookup field for parent company. You click on this, it brings up a list of all your accounts, and then you just simply start typing the name of an account, and I don't know what I have in here, so I'm just gonna pick one that's here, and say this is the parent company, and it adds it. The beauty of this is that your people will never misspell it. It will always be consistent, okay, because you can look it up. Um, if you wanna unlink it, you just open and unlink it, okay? Um, then the board member, if I wanted to add a board member, I will have to know the person's name, so I'm not sure who's in here. Ah, there's an Andrew, perfect. So I'm adding Andrew as a board member, so he is there, okay? I can add another board member. Now, the cool thing is I've added Andrew as a board member at Scenic Tours, all right? If I now go look up Andrew, oops, 
should be in here. Oh, see, not here because oh, it's possible that Jim can't see him. But if I look up Andrew and open his record, then um, he will show as a board member. Sorry about that. Keeping you late, keeping you late. Just one last thing. So while we're looking up Andrew, I will There he is. So there you see here Andrew is a board member for Alto Scenic Tours. So no matter where you add it, it's already related and connected. And then you can pull these into your list view. And so you can see, you know, these in the list column and it's all searchable. So explore those fields because they are new and they can maybe add some, you know, some new ideas and new things to your database. All right, sorry for keeping you late. I will let you guys get out of here. Thank you for attending. And if you need any help with anything, you can always contact our support team. Um, or if you're working in Quick Start, contact Linda or myself. Use our knowledge base um, to help you as well. There's lots of stuff out on the knowledge base. Um, and if you have any ideas for new topics, I'm getting ready to do my September and October schedule, probably by the end of this week. So please send ideas to info at claritysoft.com and I'll incorporate them into upcoming webinars. With that, thanks for your attention and go have a wonderful rest of the day.